afternoon, everyone, and to all our uh, avid uh, watchers uh, on webcast today. I am uh, Commissioner Brian Kolb, uh, the Vice Chair of the New York State Public Campaign Finance Board. And I'd like, again, thank everyone for being here today. Uh, we're going to be shortly welcoming uh, two new commissioners uh, to the committee. Uh, but before we do that, I would like to acknowledge uh, and thank, uh, personally thank Echo Yanko for his service to the Public Campaign Finance Board. Uh, Echo is a sheer pleasure to work with and have dialogue with and in, a, in the spirit of cooperation and trying to make the largest and, quite frankly, the most expensive uh, public campaign finance program in the country. And I just wanted to thank him and his family uh, for their dedicated time and effort and also to wish them all uh, Godspeed and good luck uh, in their new venture in the Midwest. Uh, so having said that, uh, I think what we'll do is uh, I'd like to welcome uh, the new commissioners, uh, one that's uh, remote, uh, Keisha Gaskins Nathan. And uh, good afternoon and welcome, Commissioner. And of course, to my right, my former colleague in the New York State Assembly, Barbara Lifton. And with that, I think I'm going to turn it over to Doug to uh, go over the commissioner's well, file. Thank you. So, uh, certainly. Uh, I echo uh, Commissioner Kolb's uh, gratitude for uh, the service that uh, Echo Yanka provided uh, as our uh, first chair and um, getting uh, this Public Campaign Finance Commission off the ground. Um, so by way of introduction, um, uh, uh, the uh, Commissioner uh, Keisha Gaskins Nathan, uh, we welcome. Um, she was appointed to the Public Campaign Finance Board by the majority legislative leadership in the Senate and the Assembly by Speaker Carl Hasty and uh, Senator Andrea Stewart-Cousins. Um, Commissioner Gaskins Nathan uh, is the director for the uh, Democratic Practice uh, United States Program and the Racial Justice Initiative at the Rockefeller Brothers Fund. Um, Ms. Gaskins Nathan is dedicated to adv advancing measures and ideas uh, to improve uh, the democratic systems and engage uh, democratic culture in the United States to support full and fair democratic and economic opportunity for all residents. Um, prior to joining her current position, uh, she was senior counsel with the Brennan Center for Justice, serving as the director of the Redistricting and Representation Program. And her portfolio included redistricting reform, voting rights, and elections with a focus on voter suppression issues. Um, she's a frequent lecturer and writer on issues related to women politics movement and uh, democratic transformation, and uh, is also a trial attorney. And I certainly have had the pleasure of uh, um, serving on panels with her and uh, um, and uh, I'm uh, very pleased uh, that uh, she will be joining us on the Public Campaign Finance Board. Um, also uh, to my right is uh, our new commissioner, Barbara Lifton, who was uh, appointed by Governor Hochul just yesterday. And uh, uh, Commissioner Lifton uh, represented the uh, 125th Assembly District uh, in the Assembly for 18 years. Um, uh, that district included all of Tompkins County and various parts of Cortland County and the city of Cortland. And during her tenure in the State Assembly, Commissioner Lifton was a leader in the effort to make sure New York had the best, most secure, accurate, and reliable voting machines possible after the federal government passed the Help America Vote Act, indeed, both when we first met. And uh, she certainly was instrumental uh, in um, uh, uh, basically the designing the uh, voting system that we have today, which we always said that uh, New York may have been the last uh, to implement the Help America Vote Act, but we were the first to get it right. <laughs> Out of my garage. <laughs> um, so, uh, uh, 
uh, Commissioner Lifton was uh, the Assembly's representative to the Citizens Election Modernization Advisory Committee that uh, worked with the uh, State Board in implementing the new system and was uh, a member of the Election Law Committee. So, uh, Commissioner, welcome Thank to you. both uh, you and Commissioner uh, Gaskin Mason. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. So, um, with that, uh, um, I would uh, move that uh, we uh, proceed with the uh, election uh, of the chairman to fill the vacancy created by uh, Commissioner Yanka's resignation. And I'll start by nominating uh, Commissioner Lifton. I'll second the nomination. Well, are there any other nominations? <laughs> Being none, we'll close. And uh, all in favor of the nomination of Barbara Lifton as the uh, Public Campaign Finance Board Chairwoman. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Thank you. You're in charge. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, Shakespeare, it is an honor that I dreamed not of, <laughs> but, but here we are. Uh, thank you all very, very much. Thank you for the confidence uh, that you've just shown in me, and uh, I hope to be able to earn that over the next over the months ahead as we navigate this new, um, wonderful, I'm sure, system of public financing campaigns. So let's get right to our agenda. We've lost some time today, so here we go. We've got minutes. Everyone's take, taking a look at the minutes. Motion to adopt the minutes. So moved. The last meeting. Second. 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 Vote. Get a vote on that. Any uh, yeas on the? Aye. 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 Any any opposed? No. Opposed. The minutes are approved. Thank you. Now we're going to do the updates on the unit from Co-Director Hauser. Cheryl. Thank, Thank you. you. And welcome, Commissioner uh, Gaskins, Nathan, and Commissioner Lookin to the New York State Public Campaign Finance Board. I really look forward, or we really look forward to working with you um, as we work on our program. And I know that uh, we do um, want to wish um, former Commissioner Echo Yanka very well. Um, it was a pleasure to, to work with him on our program, and I hope that we continue work in the future. Um, so this is an overview of the unit activities since our last meeting on August 15th, and will likely be our last meeting before we launch our program. In 15 days, on November 9th, 2022, the New York State Public Campaign Finance Program will launch. The New York State Public Campaign Finance Program will be the largest public matching fund program in the nation, covering 217 state offices, including four statewide offices, the governor or lieutenant governor, attorney general, and state comptroller, 63 state senate offices, and 150 assembly offices. We have been working very diligently toward a successful launch. So on November 9th, significant outreach activities will be initi initiated to educate the public organizations and also potential candidates about the program. These activities include updating our website at www.pcfd.ny.gov with descriptive program content. This includes information on registration forms, application and certification forms, competitive criteria forms, primers by office, a handbook, eligibility threshold limit information, training opportunities, and an enforcement section. We will be sending an email to all registered type one committees for the covered offices. Currently there's 434 that were registered in 2022. And overall there's 1,143 active committees that fall under those offices. Furthermore, we will send an email to all registered type one committees that re register after November 9th, letting them know of this program and opportunities. We have created two call centers for the Public Campaign Finance Board, a general call center line and an enforcement line. Um, and those numbers will be on the website. But, um, 
on the 9th. Starting at the on October 30th, there's a rotating attorney of the week schedule to supplement our candidate liaison program, which will be initiated. We have collaborated with the Brennan Center to film a social media piece to feature uh, our chair and vice chair. Now, in the last couple of weeks, there has been some a change on our board, and we will be working with the Brennan Center to work on that social media piece and have it um, published for an upcoming launch. Um, but we're happy to work with them on this initi initiative. Um, that is not the only initiative we're doing to launch this program. We have been meeting with the Office of General Services Creative Services team for content creation for social media sites in both flat pieces and digital. We initiated a media buy request and received back two vendor um, responses, all with them under our discretionary threshold but still publicly bid. The vendors provided a media plan, cost breakdown, and relevant case studies. Um, our overall goal is to educate the public and to drive users to our website and the a soon to be created Twitter and social media accounts. Uh, in addition, we met with that creative content team yesterday and they provided four concepts for our launch. We have internal teams working on options provided and we'll make a decision tomorrow and this week on which way, what language we wanna go. We were all very excited at the meeting. It looks phenomenal. I feel everyone will be pleased. Um, and as I said, we are creating social media accounts. So we will be working very diligently starting on November 9th to launch this program. Um, and I, I believe that across the state, um, you will see ads and, and pieces that will progressively increase over the six weeks after that letting people know about the program and opportunities that if they want to run for office, what opportunities are out there, if they want to contribute, how that contribution can be amplified. Other outreach includes we have um, an external working group. We met with them on September 18th to provide an introductory meeting um, and to provide an update on the program. We will be setting up a, a training program for them, it's the content we will have out for the public after November 9th, but we will train them as we have been advised that they would like to train others. Um, but honestly, after uh, November 9th, the board report will transition um, to unit reports with more of a focus on metrics. Um, for example, um, in August, our website had 4,149 page views from 1,000 476 unique visitors. In September, we had 2,694 page views from 939 unique visitors. We will provide you metrics on registrations and applications. We will update you with compliance review metrics, how many were assigned, how many were reviewed. We will provide you with call center data and an enforcement report, including metrics on complaints, sufficiency referrals, and failure files as applicable. Um, in terms of implementation, um, and I will cover this, the uh, areas I have covered in, that we have covered in all the prior unit reports. Our current internal state board system, um, there's a financial management system, which is called FIDUS. There's an electronic uh, filing software called EFS. Um, our ITU department has updated the internal FIDUS system to create a new committee type for the public campaign finance board candidates. In addition, the electronic filing software has been updated to capture additional disclosure fields required on individual contributions and weekly claim submissions. A new schedule to track public fund payments made to the candidate and, and public fund expenditures or qualified campaign expenditures will be completed soon. Staff internally is reviewing language and we're testing the updates. We are meeting with external vendors um, to review the changes made so they can update their system. We are including screenshots of these changes in the handbook and the user guide for ITU is being updated. Our training team created website content, material by office, and we're working on the handbook. We have created primers by office that include an eligibility punch list to guide an interested party on what they have to do and when. We had those um, all our content tested by the Civic Center for Civic Design 
for usability. We met with them, they provided us feedback. We are taking a very complex subject, breaking it down and making it easy to use and understand. The results are a streamlined, high quality set of documents that have a good user experience. I believe all the commissioners have a packet of each of, for each office. Um, audit and training completed intake and auditing procedures and materials, including management reporting and tracking statistics. There's new committee registration forms, welcome letters, application forms. We created the physical space for intake and procedure handling. Audit created a payment book that will be used to import our filing data and audit eligibility requirements and determine payments. That is being tested and that is a manual process until we have our new software. Enforcement has developed procedures and physical space for implementation. Staff training, uh, we also provided two days of training in Excel to all auditors. Uh, new hires in certain subunits were sent to accessibility training, and we trained two additional staff in Site Factory who can support our website. Um, all of our staff also um, met with the New York City Campaign Finance Board, and they provided what they do and how they look at compliance activities. <coughs> our regulations on program debate and enforcement were finalized, they're posted, that was as of September 14th, uh, 2022. In terms of pro program management, the request for a proposal, our RFP was issued on October 14th, 2022. That has been a very long initiative that we've been working with the Office of General Services. And what it's designed to do is it's a software acquisition um, for started off for public campaign finance, to automate auditing and to make payments. But um, when you look at the state board and how we are a unit of the state board, um, the decision was made to make, to look at those other systems that are used for um, campaign finance, such as um, the operations candidate management CAPTIS software. There's the financial management software that is used to register committees. There's the electronic filing software and compliance software. We are going to leverage one platform and one vendor to, to have all these systems work together and be one system. So that was issued and the, the bidder intent for to bid, the deadline is November 9th, which is a great date. The bidder questions deadline again is November 9th. The bids are due December 8th at 2 p.m. Uh, then we will have uh, demonstrations towards the end of January with an anticipated contract start date of May 2023. That is an aggressive time period and we want to meet that. Um, we are currently in a restricted contact period. So if any vendor contacts anyone directly at the state board, public campaign finance board, um, that calls to be referred to the Office of General Services. In terms of the space planning, we met August 2nd, uh, which I reported last time. Essentially, uh, the fifth floor will start renovations on March of 2023. The third floor space hopes 12 PC FD staff, and we received space on the first floor, uh, about 24 spots for transition. Yep. Um, and we should be getting that space new. Uh, I believe the first, the first floor, the front part of the IT area was also completed. Um, in terms of budget, that's an, uh, an issue we will be working on um, in late October and November and report to you at the December meeting. Uh, and that discussion will involve staff, space, and funding for potential matching funds. Um, lastly, I would, I'd like to mention Amy Lopez, the former executive director of the New York City Campaign Finance Board has retired. She graciously worked with us over the last 18 months and have participated in our external working group. I know we wish her well in having a lovely retirement. On the same note, we do welcome Beth Rotman, who started yesterday um, as the new executive director of the New York City Campaign Finance Board. We really do look forward to continuing our partnership and wish her a successful tenure. And that is the unit report. Commissioners, Thank you. any questions? 
no questions, but uh, just a couple of comments in, in addition to yours, uh, Cheryl, and thanks for doing that. Uh, as Again, this is, everybody in this room is aware of this, uh, but not necessarily everyone that's watching in the outside world that, that this is going to be the largest uh, public campaign finance program in the country. And certainly it's also going to be the most expensive program in the, uh, in the, in the country. And one of the things that uh, I think uh, both sides of the aisle in terms of the staff have done a phenomenal job uh, because everybody here has really done uh, double duty in terms of trying to create uh, the largest program that's never been done before. So I think it's really a tip of the hat and a congratulations to all the hours, the hard work, uh, the dedication to trying to get this right. And uh, again, you know, certainly, you know, because there have been criticisms of other public campaign finance programs. You know, I think the underlying goal here is to always remember that what is paying for all this is the taxpayer of New York State. And that we want to ensure that taxpayer dollars are not abused and they're not misused. So as we go into the implementation phase and the software setup, uh, you know, I just want to reemphasize that we have to remember that the taxpayers are paying for everything. It's the it's all the staff, it's all the program, it's all the space, uh, it's all anything, all the printed materials uh, that taxpayers are funding the bill here. And that's why it's so important. I think it's been uh, demonstrated on both sides, uh, the, the need and the desire to want to make sure we get this to be the best program uh, in the country accordingly. So again, I would like to, because again, the staff that have been part of this program, part of the DOE, um, we're just in the process of have hired some folks uh, for the public campaign finance board aspect of it, but there's many more folks to add because of the, the breadth and depth of, of this program. Uh, so, uh, you know, we're looking forward to, uh, I know it's been a lot of hard work um, and more hard work to follow, but I want to commend the staff on both sides here for an exemplary job getting us to where we are today. And as you can tell by Cheryl's report and the depth and the detail of that, uh, that doesn't even underscore the amount of hours <laughs> and time and sweat and maybe some hair pulling um, uh, to get to this point. So I just want to say thank you uh, to everybody uh, for a great job and also my fellow commissioners for, uh, for helping facilitate this. You're here. Any other discussion about Cheryl's report? Okay, thank you. Cheryl, very much, and I'm sure you're open to talking to people Absolutely. at any at any point. At any point, <laughs> a lot of detail here. So thank you very much. Uh, moving on on the agenda, uh, there's no old business today. Nothing under old business. Let's move on to new business. We have a motion. Can I have a motion to adopt? I have the something to say about this. Yes. Yeah. Uh, this is the second time I'm going to be voting on something like this because we voted on it in the. Um, Board of Elections, but I, 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 I'm going to vote for this um, because I don't believe that it's my responsibility or any of our responsibility to try to make legislation. But uh, I have a problem with the way the tone of this, in that the uh, it, it sort of promotes teleconferencing as a second-class function by saying that if you call from a private home, it's different than if you call from a public space. And I, I think it raises a problem with a quorum under certain circumstances, okay? We have, uh, with the regular meetings, not too bad. But with the meetings, sometimes we have to call at a moment's notice or a couple of days. Um, you know, we're all at home, we could be miles away, we'll get on, and we may not be able, under certain circumstances, to get a quorum. We're in our homes, we're in places that don't, 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 don't have a public access. Um, without going into what, what I think of a law, I just want to make some suggestions as to maybe, so that, so that we, we have a, a, a base for making sure we can conduct, conduct business on an ongoing basis. I think we should, in this resolution, define a public meeting, even though it may be defined by law somewhere, as a public place 
uh, is defined as any address or telephone number included in the notice of meeting where the public may uh, uh, sign up for security reasons to attend in person. This, this allows us to put, if I'm at home, it allows me to put my home address in. The call can, doesn't have to come to me, it can come to the office here where they can take a, take a look at who's calling and see if that's something that uh, they want to pass on or, or, or allow. But it, it would, under certain circumstances, it would give us an option of making sure we're within the law to get the, uh, you know, get the call. And I, I, you know, I see, I'm looking at places, uh, you know, things that we've done over the last seven years that I've been here, and there are times when we're, we're all at home. So I would just like that put in there. So all, all that means is you put in the address, once the address is in, it's a public place, and, you know, people can call up and try to get there. And, you know, it doesn't have to be everybody who's going in, it just has to be one extra person or someone to make the quorum in that particular case. Thank you for your comments, Andy. Anyone want to weigh in? Yeah. Are, are you moving to amend? The I, 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 I just would suggest that we adopt this and then because we do have to check there is public meeting is defined in the statute so we'd have to see what changes and this statute the legislature will be revisiting because it does sunset so this is this statute itself is not carved forever so they're going to have to come back and revisit this no matter what happens it sunset next year so yeah, two years like two years yeah, I didn't present it as an amendment. I got it. Okay, I just but I'm just talking about this. We're not we're close amending it, but I think we should adopt it first, and then we would have to research whether the I, I idea would be inconsistent with the statute. Yeah. I, I don't know the answer to that. I don't think Hickman can answer to that. Don't <clears> no, and I was going to ask for clarity because I wasn't sure. Okay. <clears throat> so the the proposal in the future, not now, right. to have the uh, address placed on the notice. I wasn't clear. Oh, well, yeah, any address. I mean, if, you, if you're going to have, if you're going to, instead of it being a private place, once you put the address in a notice, it becomes a public place. That's right. And therefore, you get around this. We problem. have done that in the past. Well, that's that the current state. <clears throat> that's the current state of the law. You can have more than one physical location. The physical location is just not Albany, New York. And that's like actually what we're doing now, um, <clears throat> where a commissioner can say, oh, I'm actually meeting from my office, for example, it has to be accessible to the public, like you have to make it available to the public and you have to notice it, but the well, state of the law is When now. we had our very first um, video meeting, uh, my law firm office was on the notice. Right. Yeah, well, like, who needed this is my problem. And, and, the, and the other thing, the other thing that, uh, that I think we should include in all the notices is an indication that those attending remotely can have access to, to uh, making comments if the chair so, so chooses to open up the meeting. Even though that's obvious, it, it, uh, I, I think having it in there uh, would, if someone had a question or thought they, they should, should attend, they'll know that they can do it from remotely. You mean the member that's attending? Or, or anyone, anyone, attending? anyone attending. If the chair says, that sometimes it happens, the chair will say, are there any comments? And people should know they can make comments somehow from wherever they are. Right, that strikes me as like a policy decision of the board of whether who well, they I, I understand. I would agree with that, although I can't recall that that's ever happened. In any well, what happens in this, in this particular right. regulation is that if you, are, if you have, if you have a, a remote commissioner, then you have to do that. Okay. You would have to look at how that works. Right. Yeah, I, I just, you know. okay. No, it, those are good comments to take into consideration things that, you know, we had thought Did about. we ever have a lawyer argue remotely? Uh, uh, not on any not that I'm aware of. Not that I recall. No. no. Would you do it like a legislature with time for open public comment or could. something? Like yeah, the, well, you like the city council. Well, well, if you've ever done that, but that, that's had a, we've had like that hearing here in the remotely. We did do a hearing, but that was planned as a hearing, so the public was invited. You know, no one showed up, right? Yeah. 
No, the the last hearing nobody showed up for this one, but we have had hearings where they actually have shown up on the light. <laughs> well, look, I'm just putting it out there. That's it. Okay, understood. Well, let's let's uh, you know we'll work together and look into that. Yes, yeah, certainly I'll research that. Okay, I move the resolution. Thank you, Andy. Do we have a second? Second. Um, Nick, are you going to give an overview of this, or are we? Oh, I uh, um, certainly can. Yes. Um, so. And I'm sure the public watching is probably a little disjointed at the moment, but uh, basically what this policy uh, relates to is the ability for commissioners to uh, video conference in a meeting under certain circumstances. Um, and as already indicated, the State Board of Elections already passed this, uh, this policy, but I will give a you know, general overview of basically what it does. So this relates to the open meetings law generally. Um, public bodies, such as this board, uh, when they when there's a quorum and we're discussing public business or uh, conducting public business, the meeting has to be open in the public. That doesn't mean that there's just one physical location here in Albany, for example. You can have multiple um, physical locations as long as the location is noticed in the public hearing um, notice and as long as all the physical locations are access, accept, accessible to the public. Um, now, for the past two years, we have been meeting remotely, but that was um, because of various amendments to the law and a state of emergency order by the executive. However, the state uh, the emergency order did expire on September 14th, so remote meeting is just not a, a possibility. It's just not an option at this moment. Does, can I clarify? Does accessibility mean ADA accessible? Is that um, it should. It means, you know, anyone, you know, who, like, notices the meeting and, and the notice can attend the meeting, and yes, it should be Can't be in a home without a ramp. A I would print. probably not encourage, <laughs> encourage that, but that's something I would have to, like, research a little bit more, okay. um, because I know there are, like, several opinions out there at the, the, the Committee of Open Government of, like, what constitutes proper notice, you know, what's open to the public, things of that nature. So I'd have to research that, honestly. That makes sense Saturday. that the location would have to be accessible. Yeah. I would advise it if, if possible, um, but again, I don't know if there's a conclusive opinion on that either. So that would be something I have to look into. Are you um, saying that the whole law sunsets? Well, the, so, and this goes to, uh, there was an amendment uh, to the open meetings law this past session, which permits video teleconferencing in certain circumstances, and yes, that does sunset in uh, 2024. Um, so if a commissioner cannot attend a meeting for various reasons, such as, say, illness or caregiving duties or for some unforeseen circumstance, that commissioner under this law can attend uh, via video teleconference if, and only if there's a quorum in all the physical location, again, plural, can be more than one physical location. But as long as there's a quorum and physical and these physical locations and there's a circumstance where a commissioner can attend the meeting, then they can attend, they can video teleconferencing. That's what the statute provides for. Uh, now, under, under extraordinary circumstances. Well, that's the term, yeah, you, yes, you use I, I think the that's the law also. Right, and uh, the, our policy does define what an extraordinary circumstance is, is which includes disability, illness, caregiving duties, and any unforeseen circumstance within the discretion of the commissioner where they are not do, able to. Do you know any business that has a, a, a situation like that? I got, you got, you got <laughs> major businesses who are dropping all of their real estate because their people are working remotely. I mean, why why are we doing this? I don't yeah. say we here, but I mean, right. I just think we should visit, revisit it somehow. No, uh, certainly, uh, but, you know, unfortunately, we're constrained with what statute provides for us, and statute provides that in order for video teleconferencing to be an option, well, one, there has to be a physical, you have to have a quorum in physical locations, and two, and this is, I guess, why the policy is before you right now, is you have to have a written policy, and prior to adopting that written policy, you have to have a public hearing. Now, the last board meeting, we uh, the board authorized us to, the staff to conduct a public hearing, which we did, and I believe the uh, report of that hearing is in your in your packet. Um, in summary, there were no public comments, so accordingly, we're, we are recommending that you uh, adopt um, the 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 policy as as, uh, as drafted, 
And of course, we're going to look into and research uh, recommendations of success. Thank you, Nick. Any other discussion? <clears throat> motion? I made the motion. Oh, you made the motion. We had a second? Do we yes. have a second? Thank you. I keep being correct here. And hands. Uh, all how many people in favor? favor? All Thank you. All in favor? <laughs> all in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you very much. And now we're going on to a motion to, um, can I can I get a motion to adopt the resolution on the appointment of co-director? Is it Zellman or Zellman? Is that a correct I'm sure, uh, Harl Zellman. Yes. Zellman, I thought, and I say the CEI, I think, I think that's Zellman. Um, Mr. Zellman, co-director Zellman, can I get a motion? I would like to make that motion. Thank you. And I'll second. And a second. And so we have a second. We have a uh, how many? Uh, in, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And the ayes have it. Congratulations. Thank you, Madam Chair. Let me first uh, thank you and uh, Commissioner uh, Gaston Statham on, on your on your appointments. Um, looking forward to working with the team. It's something that you feed in. So thank you so much. Thank you. Congratulations. Okay. Thank you all. Um, we don't need discussion on this. Do we? Or any, any or any any notes? All right, I, all right. My notes. Um, no executive session today. We're going to set the date. I guess the next item. Set the date for the next meeting. The next one day scheduled for December. So it's 15th. set for December fifteenth. Okay. That, that is all set, and it's the same day. I guess same time as at twelve p.m. Court of elections. I, yes. No. It'll be immediately preceded. I move that we adjourn. I second. You guys have it. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you both so much, and thank you all for being flexible with my participation, right. participation today. Yeah. So we look forward to seeing you in December. <laughs> 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 <laughs>